Hey, it's been another couple of weeks and made some progress on my physics engine. So this is what we're looking at is non-rotating objects like that um, standing thing and also objects that are totally static. So that's just uh, infinite inertia basically. Oh, and this, this scene also has some friction. So I also added friction. Um, so you guys have seen this one before. Uh, when I first did this demo, you might have noticed that the uh, when the two boxes start to come apart, it's a little bit sticky, and that's because I wasn't clamping the constraint force to be positive. So right before the two shapes released, the constraint force was actually pulling them back together a little bit. Um, so this this scene doesn't have any friction. Um, okay. This is, I think I'm the proudest of this one. So this is demonstrating how uh, friction lets things roll. So uh, when I first wrote this scene, I accidentally put both the shapes, um, I put their vertices in clockwise order and I, was, I thought my code was horribly broken because uh, it wasn't working. Like the, the objects were penetrating each other. Um, <clears throat> that's because I implemented the contact generation assuming that the objects were that the convex holes were specified in counterclockwise order uh, I don't have circles yet so that's why this is an octagon rolling down a triangle instead of a circle rolling um, it's on my list of things to add so there's friction and stacking so uh, <clears throat> another one of the things I added was uh, a little bit of coherence. Basically it saves the solutions for all the constraints from the previous frame and if the constraint exists in the current frame it'll it'll basically seed the solution with what it saved from before and supposedly that helps make stacking um, more stable so you can see they're not flying apart right now. Let's watch it again. This is also showing that friction kind of works um, even for a bunch of objects stacked on top of each other. I would like to at some point run demos side by side so I can see like the effects of these different things that I've added like the coherence or different ways of stopping the iteration of the solver or different numbers of iterations through the solver. Um, also the non-penetration constraint is configurable. I added a um, with Baumgart stabilization so that if two objects are start out penetrating they will get pushed apart slowly. Um, also there's a little bit of slop in the, the non-penetration to go along with that. Uh, so the, the scene actually does behave differently based on how much slop you, uh, you allow and also how much like how hard two penetrating objects will get pushed apart. Um, <coughs> I just found something that worked and used it for all the scenes, and it seems pretty stable. Um, one thing that really, really needs to be done is I need to optimize, because I haven't optimized anything. So this uh, this next scene actually runs pretty slow. Everything else is running at 100 FPS. I just have it running on a fixed frame rate for the demo. but. I mean, it's it's possible that stuff might be unstable at different time steps, but I feel like smaller time step is probably fine. Larger time steps are when things will probably get a little bit weird. Uh, in case, oh yeah, so that's uh, just the simulation catching up because because <laughs> this took so long and it's expecting to run at a fixed frame rate so if it takes too long and then we give it something easier to calculate like this so then it'll process all those frames real quick and then go back to normal. Yeah I actually thought there was a problem with like the way I was using SDL because when I drag my window around uh, I was actually when, before I recorded my first video of this um, <coughs> But I drag my window around and then the thing would freeze and it turned out that I had implemented my fixed frame rate stuff wrong. 
because uh, I was checking to see if the expected wait time until the next frame was positive, but I was using an unsigned integer for that. So basically it would just wait for how, whatever the close to max value of that unsigned integer was. So then it would just, my program would just hang because it'd just be, it'd be waiting, waiting for probably years. I don't remember exactly how big that interval is. Anyways, let's go through all these demos one more time. Um, yay, dropping stacks of blocks on each other. And then they sit there. And then this thing happens too fast because he needs to catch up. Whee! They don't stick anymore. It's awesome. They slide apart just like you would expect them to. Um, yeah, so like the, the block that doesn't rotate, I, I'm thinking of using something like that for a character controller. Uh, I would like to make a, like a simple platformer out of this game, uh, this physics engine at some point. Uh, that's probably not the next thing on my list of things to do. Like I'll probably add a little bit of optimization and then pull this out into its own library, like put it on hackage and then go on to bigger, better things. And then maybe, maybe if I get bored of the bigger and better things, I'll take a break and write a game. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. This is so good. So good. Oh, another funny story about this. So I used to, um, <clears throat> at one point, I was doing the uh, coherence kind of halfway. So I was saving the solution and then I was applying incremental solutions based on what I'd saved before, but I'd never actually applied the saved solution. So uh, all the simulations acted kind of weird uh, because I wasn't applying the full constraint solution. So this what would happen here is that the octagon would like hit here and it would turn once and then it would just sit against the the slope and then just slide down without rolling which was kind of awful I like this much better that might be why this simulation makes me so happy okay and then sliding stacks of boxes and then too slow again all right, well, that's all for now. Um, I look forward to doing more fun things in Haskell.